Hey, this is a tutorial on how to lay your chair parts flat and how to add dog bones. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to have to install a plugin. Uh, and that plugin is called Nifty Dog Bones. So you just give that a Google. And I would click the Autodesk link because that's the one I use and it works pretty well. And it's a $20 program, but there's a 60 day trial. Um, so we're going to go ahead and download that, um, run the installer, and then restart Fusion. And that's going to give us the ability to add uh, three different kinds of dog bones uh, to our designs. And almost everyone's design needs dog bones. And doing this manually is hell on earth. So uh, this plugin is the most stable one I've found. Um, and it's really solid. And the trial is generous. So, um, so uh, I'm not going to cover installing that because it'll be different for everyone's computer. But um, yeah, go ahead and get that installed. Uh, pause the video, work on that. And now I'm going to show you how to lay the parts flat. Um, this only works if you have Autodesk Fusion 360 Educational, um, or uh, if you would download the hobbyist version, uh, go ahead and find somebody with the educational version to do this. Or you can use a paid plugin or a free plugin like Nestor or uh, Mapboards Pro, Pro or Fuse Nest. But uh, the Fusion one is really good, but it doesn't, it's not available unless you have the educational version. So uh, for this to work, you are going to need your chair to be, you know, fully designed and ready for manufacturing. You know, in our case, that means that all of our parts are 0.695 inches thick or about 18 millimeters. Um, and then everything has been validated. Uh, oh, sorry, before laying them flat, we got to add our dog bones. It doesn't actually matter the order because they will update later. So yeah, I'll do lay them flat first because I said that already. Uh, you first thing you're going to do is you're going to make a sketch. Sorry, I opened the wrong menu. Um, and you want that sketch to break the rule. Uh, you want that sketch to be in the top level. Ideally, there's nothing in the top level except for the sketch. And you're going to put this on the top plane. Uh, it can be anywhere, but I like to put it in origin. And you're going to make that the size of your material. Uh, and our material uh, is metric plywood, which I've never used before, which is 12, 20 millimeters by 2,500 millimeters. Uh, and that gives us three extra inches, because you see it's actually more than 96 inches and, and a little bit more than 48 inches. Uh, and that's all we need from that sketch. So we can just click uh, finish sketch. And I'm going to rename this sketch fancy metric plywood. Um, just for fun. And then we're going to switch into the manufacturer workspace. And we're going to, uh, under setup, we're going to do create manufacturing model. Uh, and then what this is, is it's a new model for our design that's only for manufacturing that won't affect the layout of your chair. Um, so you can right click this manufacturing model and do edit manufacturing model. And now notice you're in this kind of weird mo uh, mode uh, that's like everything looks the same except for things are blue. Uh, that's the only way that I know. I think it's a work in progress for Fusion. But uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use this arrange feature under modify. And notice that this only exists uh, here. It doesn't exist anywhere else. Um, you have to be in the manufacturer model and an edit manufacturing model. Uh, and then it's going to ask us for our objects. And I'm going to go ahead and open this. And I'm going to uh, select all my components. Uh, I'm going to select my side frame, the mirror of my side frame. And in this model, Nilu and I organized the slats uh, within a component of components. So I could either click all of these, or I could just click the folder. Um, so that's all of our components selected. The next thing we want to do is we want to pick our envelope, uh, which is going to be our sketch. Uh, and you can just go ahead and click that sketch. Uh, the sketch has to be outside of the component that you're working on. So since the sketch is, uh, you know, fancy metric plywood, it's right here, it works. But if this sketch were inside of a component, it wouldn't let me nest it because it would move with the component. So just make sure the sketch is out, isn't, but doesn't belong to anything you plan on nesting. Uh, before I click this, because my computer is kind of slow, I'm going to make sure my frame width and my object spacing are good. Object spacing needs to be at least 0.375. That's the absolute minimum. Uh, but being more generous with yourself, 
uh, will be helpful. So I'm going to do it uh, one and one for the spacing. But if you have a lot of parts, you might need to make it smaller. But our bit is 0.375, so they've got to be further apart than that. Uh, so I'm going to select the face. And if you have a complicated thing, you might want to uncheck preview. But yeah, look at that. It did it. Now I'm going to click OK. Um, but we're not actually ready to see and see these because uh, you know none of these corners can be cut on a CNC because they won't be sharp and the chair won't go together very well. Uh, so I one cool thing about this nesting feature is it's actually aware of the grain of the material. It assumes that it's the long ways, I think, and tries to orient things that way for aesthetics, um, which is kind of neat. Uh, and then if I wanted to export this for laser cutting, um, I would create a sketch. Uh, the sketch can be anywhere as long as it's parallel. I'm going to create it here. Why not? And then I'm going to grab the project tool under sketch, create project. And I'm going to project not bodies in this case. I want to do specified entities. I want to do faces because uh, in this case, you know, for some things, it's the same. You know, these are this, these are called prismatic. They're the same all the way through. The like all their layers are the same. But since uh, if I if I do bodies for these, you'll notice that I'll get uh, I'll get the the complete outside, which isn't what I want. Because for these, for laser cutting, I want I just want this face and this face. Um, because uh, you can't laser cut partially through. So if you're doing blind. Uh, mortise and tenons, uh, probably also called other things. Um, you want to select the side that has the, the, the slot so that it will be assemblable. Uh, now that I've projected all these, I can click OK. Where did that sketch land? So that sketch landed in my manufacturing model. I'm realizing now I also could have made a sketch in the manufacturing model level, which would have been better because it wouldn't have uh, polluted my model with the sketch up here. So that's definitely also an option. Um, so this sketch now, if we hide everything else, uh, is ready for laser cutting, kind of. Um, can we scale a sketch? I don't think you can. I'm gonna, I plan on scaling this in Illustrator because it seems less, uh, I'm going to finish sketch. I'm going to do a quick experiment. I'm going to see if I can modify scale entities. No, I can't. I can't scale this because it's uh, it's locked. But I can export this as a DXF. I'm going to be like laser. Laser layout. Uh, you could also use this for anything that wanted a DXF, like uh, you know some CNC programs work in two D. Save as DXF. Uh, you want to include the units uh, in this model as an inches unit a model, so you want to include inches in there because DXF will not do it for you. And then. Um, I'll show you how to scale this in Illustrator in a minute. But for now, at, we're actually not done because this has a problem. You know, maybe that's fine for laser cutting because laser cutting cutters can cut sharp corners, but it's not fine for uh, for CNC. So I'm going to leave the manufacturer environment. I'm going to go back to the design environment, and I am going to go into modify. And after your plugin is installed, you have these nifty nifty dog bone buttons. I'm going to click Nifty Dog Bone. Our tool diameter, uh, unless we've discussed otherwise, is 0 0.375 inches. And you are going to select um, everything. I guess we have to do it by body at the body level. So we can just draw a box. Oop. Oh, that was dumb. I could have just selected one of these components. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this one, this one. 
And I, because my slats are all instances of each other, I don't need to do them all. I just need to do one because they're, they're connected. Look at that. I'm gonna do that again, but zoomed in. So if we look at it now, you can see, uh, you know, these fit together, but they can't actually be made that way. But if we go ahead and do nifty dog bones, modify nifty dog bone, I can click this body and you can see it automatically finds the spot and uh, does a dog bone. There are several types of dog bones. For most people, I would recommend the minimal corner. Uh, the corner, uh, you know, with the minimal corner, you can put it together with a hammer. With the corner, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit easier to assemble. But uh, there are also these invisible ones along long side and along short side. Um, I think actually in this case, along along long side might might be good. Yeah, I think that's great. So for that one, I'll do a long, long side because then it will be hidden by the slats. Um, but for the slats, they're visible from the top. So for the slats, I'm going to do modify nifty dog bone. Click here. Uh, so I think that one's pretty ugly, personally. Uh, I think that one's pretty weak. Um, but maybe it's fine. Uh, I'm just going to do minimal corner and then we can just hammer it together. Uh, and that just leaves this this blue one. It, despite the fact that it's a mirror of its friend, mirrors in the design environment aren't live. Uh, you, have, you have to go back in time on the timeline in order for them to percolate through. I'm just going to do nifty dog bone. It's a good idea to do dog bones last. Um, because the uh, it's just kind of a mess. They uh, they add this complicated folder of operations to your to your design, and uh, they're not they don't update live. So if you change something about your model, uh, you have to go and do update dog bones, or, or they'll be all your dog bones will be broken. Cool. So now this design looks great. It has all of its its dog bones done. Turn the slats on just to let one last look. Cool. Uh, I'm going to go back to the manufacturer workspace. And once my computer unfreezes, you'll be able to see that not only did my, my sketch update with the dog browns, but the manufacturing model also updated with the dog browns. Um, so now I can export the, ske the sketch again, laser layout. I guess gotta go edit manufacturing model and then uh, save as DXF. And this is the same as the last one, laser layout. I think actually you should laser cut the one with dog bones, even though it doesn't need them. I think it would be good just to make sure that things fit together the way you expect. Um, so now I'm going to open Illustrator. And we are going to uh, import this DXF and we're going to scale it by 17.44%. I should have opened Illustrator before I started recording, <laughs> especially when I'm screen sharing. New share, Adobe Illustrator, share. Cool. So I'm going to open File open, 
uh, desktop laser layout with dog bone inches and you get this awful pop up. And by default, it might be something else. You got to type, you click the unit first and then type the one. Um, and if we actually, we can just do it here. It's a lot of fours, but I think one or two fours is fine. It doesn't have to be precise. Does this work? I've never done this before. I was going to do it with the scale tool in Illustrator, but I forgot that it had this feature. Thinking hard, Illustrator. Let's take a look. So if I select this and I click the transform menu, uh, the width is 400 millimeters and the height is, that's about right. Yeah. So yeah, that worked. Um, the, I like, I don't like to cut out of the DXF. I like to actually copy the stuff into a new document. Um, it's hard for me to explain what it changes, but it, uh, it just makes the illustrator configuration more normal because when you open a DXF, it, it, it comes with weird colors. So yeah, this is right. That was really easy. Um, and then I just want to make the 0 0.01. And I want to save this as an Illustrator file. Laser layout with dog bones inches.ai. Um, yeah, and then this is ready for laser cutting. And what's cool about this is that you know we can easily go back to fusion and you know any changes we make we go back to the design model you know let's say we wanted to put a hole here for no reason <laughs> and then i go back to the manufacturer workspace the computer's a little bit slow You'll see the holes in a second. There they are. And then if I export that sketch, the sketch will also have the holes. Um, this was so much more difficult before they had this arrange feature. So I'm really glad we have it. Uh, and yeah, then you're going to go ahead and you're going to submit your Fusion file uh, and your Illustrator file. So your Fusion file with your manufacturing model included, that will, be in that will automatically be included in the thing, uh, and your Illustrator file. Um, to iLearn, um, and then we will be able to laser cut um, as soon as possible. Thank you.